And we should be good <laughs> to go up. Yes! Can get you out of my What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Dragas here, and welcome back to another episode of Scrap Mechanic. So we're back with the dreaded Sky Elevator here. I did do a little bit off uh, recording. If you did miss my last few episodes, I've been building a Sky Elevator that has not really been wanting to work with me. It got stuck up there in the last episode. I actually did build a new pole, by the way. Uh, so everything is all good once again. It's nice and attached to the ground. goes all the way up to the sky box. Now, I haven't actually tried this out again, and I did do a few changes here. You can see my wheels are down lower now. I basically rotated these 180 degrees. I also got to add my engines back. And I got rid of the rockets as well because I don't want any rockets on this creation. This is supposed to be an all-wheeled creation. Anyways, ideas for today. First of all, I'm going to test this elevator out, see if it's still good, if it can go up there. Uh, we might add some wheels to the roof to add some more stability to it, depending on our first test flight here. Uh, then after that, I'm going to actually design something to get off of this pole because I don't want this just to be a sky elevator. I want this to be essentially a jack-of-all-trades. So I gotta figure out some way to pretty much hide this ground, get rid of one wheel and be able to drive this thing off. Keyword there is driving, so we're obviously going to have to add wheels to this as well. And if we have time, I actually want to design this into a monorail system as well, so I can just attach this to a beam going horizontally instead of vertically. That way, we can get on a nice monorail system around this thing as well. Now, that is a big ass project. I don't think we're going to do everything in this episode, but that's kind of my thought process here. So let me know what you guys think of that. Anyways, we have a lot of work to do, so I'm not going to waste any time, and I'm actually going to try an electric engine out here. Uh, some of you are saying that I should be using an electric engine for things like this, just because it's less wonky and crazy. If you saw the last episode, it was uh, pretty damn shaky in this thing. So we're going to try an electric elevator. I don't know if I need more than one. For right now, I'm just going to do one, and I'm going to try and keep this as evenly weighted as possible. Uh, now the fact that I have an engine over here, I'm going to put a steering wheel over here, and I am in fact going to use a steering wheel. Uh, I guess we'll just put it kind of right here. I know it looks kind of weird there, but I can always edit it later on as well. Now, I don't think I've set up the rotation of these yet, so let's just press the button here. No. Okay, so I gotta set this up again. I believe last time we did 30 degrees, so let's just try that out, see how tight it is, and uh, we'll go from there. I don't even know which direction I'm supposed to go. I believe now that I rotated them 180 degrees, they should be going the opposite way. So, yep, there we go. Assumption was correct. That does not seem that tight at all, though. Okay, well, let's just add this engine to these wheels here. Uh, set everything up and see if it in fact can go up. Uh, looks like all the wheels are actually right already, which is... I, that usually never happens. Alright, and we're gonna add that to that. And let's just try this out and see... Yeah, that's hardly enough power to be going up. But as you can see, it is actually lifting off the ground very, very slowly. Let me actually... Uh, oh! Of course, that's the reason why. Okay, maybe let's go into the middle here. I don't know how fast the electric engines are, actually. I've never really used them, so... There we go. Oh my god, that is so much more smooth! I don't know who recommended that, I only saw one comment of that, but that's working way better. Now, the unfortunate part is it seems to be we're stuck here. I don't know if I should tighten this up a bit. Let's try that out first, because I need this pole to stay in the middle. It's uh, pretty much grabbing over there. And now it's actually falling down, so yeah, we definitely need more pressure on these wheels. So let's go up to 45 degrees here and see if that helps. If not, I might need to put some wheels on the roof as well, which is what I was going to do anyways, and that way we have more contact points on this pole. Therefore, hopefully it's a little more stable. Let's actually just reset this right now, so I want to... Let go of that. There we go. We're nice flat on the ground and back once again. I also added these two wheels on here based on your suggestions as well. So we are perfectly around this whole pole now. This should be a lot more stable. Okay, let's go up again here. Oh, this is just so nice. It's way slower, but it actually feels like an elevator now. Now, is it getting caught anymore? No, it actually, it's perfectly in the middle, basically. It's, it's, it's leaning a bit but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, once again, we're just gonna let go here because this is the fun way to drop. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, but that was obviously a little too slow for my liking. This actually might be too slow even at full throttle. I'm hoping this is enough. Let's try this again here. Just see what happens. And oh, there we go. That's more like it. A little bit more slower than my other engines, but still working extremely well. 
Now I'm just doing this as a test run just to see if everything's working all right. I actually don't know if this pole is perfect either. Maybe I put a block in the wrong place. I don't know. Just making sure everything's good. We're not going to build anything on the Skybox today, but that is definitely a plan in the near future. I know a lot of you want to see me do that, and I definitely do have that planned out. But for right now, I just want to make this elevator as useful as possible, and that means uh, spending a lot of time here. Oh. And there we go, once again, perfectly right at the top here. That just works out so well. Does this actually stick enough too? No, as you can see, it slowly falls once again. So I gotta figure out some way to truly grip this to it without using rockets. Okay, but this is the fun part. Let's uh, let go of this and off we fall to the ground. I love this free falling. Okay, I guess I'll fall out. Please don't get stuck. I would be so sad if I lose my elevator again. I don't know if I'm freaking out, but I feel like it's really, really sideways and it looks kind of stuck. So I'm hoping it's not, but it's got a long fall. What the fuck just happened? Hey, you're playing the game wrong. Stop that. No, you're playing the game wrong, you fucking game! Jesus! I fell right through the floor. Well, at least my elevator's back, so the very dangerous drop from the roof seems to work just fine. Okay, so now that there's absolutely nothing wrong with my elevator lift, we gotta figure out a way to get this off of this lift without destroying this wonderful little machine here. My first assumption is this is the back of my elevator. I'm going to probably open this up and uh, rotate these wheels, and then I can just drive right off of it. So to do that, I'm going to need another bearing on this little block right here. That means we're going to have to unfortunately delete all this. I hate doing this because I'm always worried that I'm going to screw it up when I put it back on. Oh, I'm trying to rotate the damn thing right now. Let's uh, get rid of all of these. And perfect. Now we can go here, put a bearing here, and that way I can rotate this whole uh, me mechanism if I want to get it out of my way, which would be perfect. There we go, and that is all back down, and put my bearing back on, and my two wheels on, and we should be good to go. Obviously, I gotta reprogram these, but that shouldn't take too long at all. Okay, so I connected it back up, I just wanna try it out here, and... Oh, shit! Okay, so that bearing has to be tight. As you can see, it bends sideways now, which was an issue I was having in my earlier prototype machine that I kind of built, which was this one over here. Now let's see what happens when I add this to a switch. So I want to rotate this by 180 degrees when I press the button, and I also want to attach this, hopefully, to my seat. That way I can do it right on my seat. Perfect. Now I can go over here, press the button. Oh, shit, wrong way, wrong way. Oh, God, that could have ended badly. <laughs> Okay, 180 degrees the opposite way because we don't want it rotating in on itself. So there we go, and that gets out of my way. There's actually an engine in the way of that, but it doesn't need to rotate all the way anyway, so that should be just fine just doing that. Now the big thing I wanted to find out was is it still okay when it's put on the pole, and it looks like now that that's programmed to a button, the bearing isn't just randomly going, so it seems to be totally fine now. So let's just put this back on the engine. There we go, and everything is all set up. Now all I gotta do is get rid of the floor, and maybe open this up. I don't wanna get rid of this door, because I do like, well not really a door, but just kind of a wall. I think I'll put that on a bearing as well, and just open it up. Also, we may as well attach this to my seat that way. I want everything to be done on this one seat over here. So we can press the one button to rotate this. I just got to remember these and then press this button to let go and tighten these. So there we go. Not too bad. Okay, the next task is to hide this floor. Now to do that, I'm actually going to go all the way to the edge here if I can. Uh, let me make sure I get rid of everything I need to. That should be perfect, just like that. Now I'm going to want to actually flip all of this over to the right here. I still want the floor here. Obviously, I just don't want a hole in the floor. Uh, I just got to set this up right. And I'm also going to make this door open. Actually, how am I going to do that? Because this whole floor is moving sideways. Okay, I actually didn't know you could put bearings on these yellow things, so what I'm going to do for this is just make this a little bit... Oops, didn't mean to do that. A little bit taller, uh, which really won't look too fancy or anything. Nothing about this looks fancy, though, so it's no big deal. And I'm just going to actually rotate this outwards when I do want to. So that should just rotate outwards and leave this totally open for me to use. Now, because these fences are going to get in the way, I'm actually going to also end my floor right before them. So right around... Oh, actually, I should go from this side because I want my bearing to be right here. So we're going to put the bearing on, and then we're just going to... Oh, use the floor and go just to the front of this actual door. Now, obviously, there's part of it missing here, but it's not too big of a deal. Now, once again, I can attach this. 
Now, once again, I can attach this to my controller here, and let's actually uh, figure out which way do we want this to rotate. Let me actually look at here. It here. So I want it to go to the blue by 90 degrees should be perfect. Uh, of course, this is getting pretty damn tight in here, so I'm trying to get inside. Okay, blue by 90 degrees should be perfect. So let's try that out. Yes, as you can see, everything is just fine. And we're going to add this to the controller as well. That is on number three. We want that to go outward. So once again, blue, 90 degrees should be just fine again. So let's try that out. There we go. And bam, that should open up. And now this pole, aside from the roof, which I still got to do, can get all the way through and I can just drive on through. Okay, and the roof is just going to be a mirror of the floor. Same idea, though. Going to get rid of all that. Oops, we missed a line here. And put it on one bearing and then just rotate it when I want to. Okay, and I'm going to want this bearing to go into the red. So let's do that really quickly by once again, 90 degrees. Everything should be okay now. There we go. So this is officially a pole that can be driven off of this machine now. So that's actually not too bad, and I just realized I put my actual seat on in reverse. Now, it doesn't really matter, so for right now, it should be good enough. And I just want to make sure... Ooh, shit. Okay, so I just realized the wheel actually gets in the way of my ground. So I got to put that on a delay, that's all. So this is where I can show you how awesome these controllers really are. So that is number two on my actual controller, so... I want to get in there and put this on the second bar. That way it will do anything on the first bar first, and then it will go to the second bar. So we're going to put that back at zero. And now everything should be fine during the transformation process. Let's try it out again here. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, now I can confidently take this on a lift, take it off its pole, because I know I can just drive right back on there once we figure out how we want to do our wheels. Now, the grand idea for this vehicle, is, if you haven't really realized it yet, is to make it my transportation vehicle. That is, it can do anything. It can go up, down, left, right, backwards, forwards, through the ground, anywhere it wants to go, it can go. Uh, next process is going to be adding some decent wheels to this, as well as power, so we can get through the rough terrain really, really quickly. Now, I don't really know how I want to go about this, but I'm just going to start building, and I feel like it will just come together after a certain amount of time. Uh, what I do want to do is use the big wheels here. I also want some really good suspension. So I just put this added platform here, and I'm going to put this out a little bit because I want my wheels to not be touching, obviously, my walls. Now for this, I'm going to use the off-road suspension, which is a much larger suspension. We're also going to use, I believe, three of them just to try it out here. I just got to figure out how I'm going to be able to turn this now. I know I've seen people use three suspensions, so I know it's possible. I just don't know if it's easy to turn when I do this. Okay, so for right now, let's just put that like that and that like that. That looks really good. That's actually... Uh, I would like the ground clearance a bit higher here, so once again, we're going to just fine-tune this a bit. Again, it's going to be a lot of trial and error for this one, because I'm really just going into it, not really caring what it looks like, and not really having a good plan here. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, that usually makes the best creations, in my opinion. So we're going to go down by two here. Does that look really ugly? Kind of, doesn't it? Okay, that's not so much of an eyesore. I got rid of two of the outer columns that I didn't even really need. Uh, still pretty damn ugly, but whatever. It's it's supposed to be an off-roading vehicle. It's not supposed to be pretty. Okay, and once again, put a bearing on this and put a wheel on this. Again, I still haven't figured out how to make this a turning mechanism, but that looks really good. I actually might do... Three wheels? Should I do three wheels? I don't even know. Like, would that be a good idea? Okay, well, for first of all, let's actually figure out how to make this a steering mechanism. Can I just put maybe a bearing, like, right in this middle suspension, and will it not screw up the other suspensions? I'm gonna find out. We're gonna try this thing out. Oh, shit, that's right. You can't actually put a suspension on a bearing. It's been a while since I've actually created a vehicle, guys. Now, I do have a little bit of an idea, though, so if we go... Oh, this is gonna look even more ugly. I don't really care, though. Okay, so if we go up there and then put a bearing on this and then attach a platform to this like that and then put my suspension on that, I can actually turn all three suspensions. Okay, now is there any way I can actually attach all these blocks together? Because I can't drag here like you usually can. I can drag down, but going left and right, it's not allowing me. So I think all these are going to be independent, meaning I can't attach a wheel to three different suspensions. Let's just try it out, though, and see what happens. If we got to go to one suspension, then it's no big deal. I just figured it'd be fun to try and do three. 
Okay, but there's one wheel done. Let's um, actually take this off of the lift for right now so I can actually try out the steering. Ooh, what? Oh my god! Okay, so yeah, those suspensions are not attached together, and as you can see, my one middle suspension is like all the way up here. Okay, so we're, we're gonna go back to the drawing board for this, because I want three suspensions, because obviously one suspension isn't enough. Did you see how high that thing was from the freaking weight? Okay, so really the only option I see is to actually add these blocks here like this, and then add a column here, so hopefully these will all be attached together now. Now this is gonna be higher up than I hoped for, but I can al always edit that later on if I'm not liking it. But honestly, I want to be as off the ground as possible anyways. So here is my very wonky looking <laughs> suspension setup. Let's try it again here, see what happens now that I have... Yes, it's using all three suspensions now. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, I only has one wheel on this creation right now, so I think once I add all four wheels, these suspensions won't be so contracted as they currently are. But what I obviously want to do is add steering to this, so we're going to add this to the actual driver's seat, and that should be all good for steering now. This is like once again backwards. I'm gonna have to change that later on as well. But if I'm looking this way, is the wheel ste steering the right way? No, it's not. It's steering in a uh, mirror. So let's just rotate that and once again try it again here. It looks like it's working just fine though. I actually can't even see. Let me try and move it out here. See if these are touching at all. No, as you can see, it's not touching the side, which is what I wanted. And it's using all three suspensions. So that looks freaking great. Okay, now here is a beast of some wheels. Now, I'm really curious when I let this go, hopefully... Shit, the suspension! This is a really heavy freaking creation! I might need to add even more suspension on. I'm actually using the off-road suspension as well. Um, uh, maybe I should use a sports suspension? So yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Like, here it is in its normal form, but when I put it off its lift, I didn't realize how heavy this would be. As you can see, I mean, it's not all the way bottom out. It's still going to work as suspension. I was just hoping for them to not be so contracted. But for right now, we'll try it out. Maybe I can add double suspension onto this triple suspension. That is, uh, add some more on top of it, and we'll see if that works. But until we get into doing things that crazy, let's just see if it works well. Just as it currently is. All right, I gotta get to the front door here, open it up, do all the connections and whatnot, and we're gonna take this sucker for a test drive. Oh, I also gotta add an engine because I'm not gonna go on electric power for this. Actually, I might have to because it's attached to the friggin' seat, isn't it? Actually, now that I remember, I think I can have as many engines as I want on one seat. It's really confusing to remember because you can only have one switch, and there's a few other rules that uh, you have to abide by in uh, Scrap Mechanic, but it seems like it's pretty good so far. Okay, and I don't know if you noticed, but I'm actually going to be using monster truck steering in uh, this creation as well, because I believe, you know, the bigger the creation is, the better monster truck steering is. So if you don't know what monster truck steering is, basically the back and the front both rotate, so it rotates a little bit faster. And with a big creation like this, I think that's going to be very useful. Okay, so actually, I'm just going to get on here, because I'm always confused when it comes to setting up these wheels. So these ones, what do I have to fix here? Okay, so all I gotta do is rotate these wheels and we should be good. So this one and this one. Now, we want the back wheels. Now, this is a little confusing because my seat is actually backwards. I'm going to be fixing that later, but now it should be... Oh, actually, I didn't need to rotate that one wheel, but that goes like that, that goes like that. So I just need to rotate this one back and I think we should be okay. There we go. So that is what you want. You want the front wheels and the back wheels doing the opposite thing so you actually rotate. That looks great. Let's add an engine to this and see how she handles. There we go, and there we go. Now I just gotta make sure the rotations are correct. That is correct. That is correct. These ones are probably not correct. I am correct in my assumption. There we go. I also want to obviously power these suckers up. So let's go to 100% here, because I feel like we got a heavy enough creation to do that. So two engines, four wheels right now. Let's see how this sucker works. And again, I'm backwards. I know it's confusing, but uh, we will fix that later on. And first impressions, not too bad, actually. I would like, obviously, some more suspension. I also may add some more wheels because it feels really slidey. Like, extremely. Like, I don't have any damn friction going to my wheels. It's almost like I'm on ice. So that's going to be interesting to get used to. And obviously, my ground clearance could be... A little bit better. So again, trial and errors here. I think we are going to add the double suspension right now and make this thing way higher. Okay, so the quickest way to do this, I think, is actually just get rid of this whole bottom platform here. And you can attach suspension to suspension for whatever damn reason, so we need a block in the middle here. But as you can see, this is going to add a lot of ground clearance to this and hopefully uh, make this thing way more controllable. 
Okay, now look at this beast now. I added some actual middle wheels as well to kind of make this more like a rover design. That way, hopefully, uh, it doesn't have any ground clearance issues because this is a very big off-roading creation, as you can see. Okay, so I'm hoping more wheels also makes the suspension a little better as well. Ooh. Um. Um. Uh. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I don't know what the hell just happened, but as you can see, my suspension, hold on here. Let me let me just put this on the lift again and hopefully it fixes it, because I really spent a lot of time on this suspension system. Okay, you damn suspension. Let's try this again here. No, I think it's too fucking heavy for the suspension or something. Like, these back ones, this one's working, kind of. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to try and drive it. Maybe it will fix itself. I have no idea. Okay, but first impressions are that it still definitely needs some work, but honestly, even with this glitchy suspension, this seems way better. Like, I'm getting over things. Uh, obviously, this isn't going to be the best off-road vehicle. It's a very heavy vehicle, but it seems to be working now. I'm really happy with the actual suspension now. The only thing I'm not happy with is the annoying sound that it makes when I'm using it. So I think we're actually going to keep the suspension like this, and we will fine-tune it as we go here, but let's actually... Give it some real gas here and see how far we can get. I'm actually having a hard time turning it, as you can see. I just ran into a tree. So yeah, high-speed turning could be better. Maybe I should add some more weight to this. I don't know. Uh, the problem is, the more weight I add, I'm actually worried about the elevator not working then. So, the fact that I'm adding so much to this creation is what's so fun about it, because everything can possibly break. Like, I don't even know if the elevator works now. Let's actually try that out. So I'm actually going to transform this motherfucker. Let's do that really quickly. There we go. We are all opened up and ready to go. Now I just got to get to the pole and attach myself on it. So that's actually going to be fun because I, I don't realize how big this thing is until I start driving it around. This is seriously a big creation. Okay, thankfully, it is a big creation, but it is quite easy to control. So there we go. I got my pipe right in there right away, or I guess beam it would be. And that looks good. So now I can close it in. Oh, I didn't want to do that yet. I want to use this first. I, I got to get used to these buttons. And then close it in. And we should be good <laughs> to go up. Yes! That feels so good. I, I feel accomplished this episode. Well, guys, I hope you are enjoying this huge project to make this. Uh, I don't even know what I should call this anymore. I mean, it's not really an elevator anymore. It's an off-road vehicle, an elevator, and hopefully next episode, we'll start building a monorail for this thing as well. As always, guys, I just want to thank you for your support. Thanks for watching and liking, and I will see you in the next one.